Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my 10 Lightroom tips, including one Photoshop one, for beginners, from a beginner, let's get into it. So get a nice chair, get yourself a desk, get yourself a mouse, that's pretty much paramount. I mean, using the track pad, it ain't gonna go well, not in my experience. Maybe you like listening to your favorite podcast, your audio books, so get yourself some headphones, get yourself seated nicely, remove your distractions. Getting yourself sitting nice and comfortable without distractions is really gonna help you, especially if like me, you like to edit sort of 10, 20 photos, you haven't got too much time, you wanna quickly get them done, smash it out, get yourself comfy, simple as that. So I've fallen for this one quite a lot. Basically, I would set it to half to start with and then maybe export some images, see what they look like, put them on Vero, Instagram, whatever, maybe look at them on an iPad, look at them on your phone and just see what the screen brightness looks like. If it looks still a bit overexposed, drop your screen brightness on whatever you're using, whether that be your laptop, desktop, your monitor, whatever. And if it looks obviously the opposite way, underexposed then boost your brightness of your screen i know you can get i think calibrators and stuff but yeah to keep this simple and, and that just just to touch your brightness up and down until you get it right and, and you'll know when it's about right because you'll look at your images and you'll go oh, that looks a bit bright or oh, that looks a bit dark simple as that guys so yeah mess about with your brightness slider definitely will help you out So if there's something you don't quite like or you want to try and move on to a leading line etc the crop tool is definitely your friend so with this photo this was taken um in broadway last week in an 18 to no not an 18 to 50 on the sony 85 mil actually um opposite side of the street busy cafe i love the reflections the red bag uh, the dog in it, the people, they're chatting, they're looking at a map down here or a phone or something. Just a lot going on, but a really great shot in my opinion. So if we wanted to crop it, we just click the crop tool. Um, what I would probably do is, is remove that guy, sorry, the um, the busy sort of, what, what is that? Uh, the board, the sign board and that for the shop. Get rid of those, for the cafe. But keep this gap here, because I think that's important. And I'd probably try, if I could, just get it above that window in. So something like that. And I think that looks great. We've cropped the photo. We've kept everything in the main elements of the photo, all the people, all the conversation, all the action. Simple as that, easy crop, lovely jubbly. So these two will make the biggest difference to any photo that you edit. You adjust the white balance, we can make it brighter, super bright, or we can make it super cool. Now this photo, if we reset it to where it was, we've got rid of the crop, so that's annoying. Let me just undo that. Um, and then I reckon we want it slightly cooler about there. And then obviously exposure, we can make it super dark that you can't see it, super overexposed. I reckon we want to underexpose this by about one stop. We've drastically changed the look of this photo with just two simple sliders. So with the latest update in Photoshop, we do get the option to do some editing locally. You can use the healing tools and the brushes, but they're not fantastic. Um, now we can do all sorts of things like edit locally, so we could add a gradient there if we just put that into the corner just to add a little bit of get rid of the overlay um, and then we probably want to just bring in a little bit of an effect there we could put that little gradient in there's not but there's no sun so it doesn't really add much of an effect or we could also select uh, create a new mask and select subject but I've got a feeling it's going to select absolutely everyone yes it has so if we just take, for example, this guy's jacket, this white jacket. So what we'll do here, and then we'll so I'll subtract using the brush. So get rid of all 
these people. Du -du 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 -du. Quick edit today, so we're not doing anything too fancy. We're just going to delete all, get rid of all this. There we go. Remove all that, remove all that. And then we'll just quickly chop his head. Something like that. Not perfect, but obviously just for the purpose of today, we'll remove the overlay. And then from here, because it's a greyish white jacket, we could just literally boost the white on it and make it a really bright jacket. You see that we've gone from something, we can make it dull like a gray, or we can boost the white. So let's do that, lock it in. And there you go, we've edited locally on his jacket. Really simple to do, really easy. Obviously you might wanna take a little bit more time, zoom in, get it a little bit more accurate, because as you can see the front of the jacket here, it hasn't done because the mask wasn't on it. But for the purposes of this video, nice and quick, shows you how to get it done. So don't be afraid to play about with a few sliders, play about with the tone curve. So let's just get onto the tone curve, we'll add a couple of points into it. A lot of people like an S-curve, so we can darken this out. We can boost it a little bit there. We could then go down here and we could go, right, we've got the red here, so let's boost that red in the bag. Probably need to, actually, you see, the same with me here, look, I'm almost messing about and still learning now, so actually we probably need to mess about with the luminance, bring that up and probably saturate the bag to give it that really bright red. I mean, that is a little bit over the top, but we can do that. Then if we look at the luminance or the saturation of the yellows and oranges, so we'll, we'll pull those back slightly and the yellow, pull that back. The greens I'm going to boost a little bit just because of the leaves and these bushes. Again, the green, the blues and the aqua, I shall pull those back ever so slightly, probably touch the aqua up. And again, look, it's just a bit of trial and error, just playing about, seeing what I like. You know, I think as you, as you become more experienced in Lightroom and messing about, you really will um, develop a skill and you'll hone what does what. So for me now, I still don't know if I mess about with this hue slider here, I'm still not really sure what it's gonna do until it's done it. Whereas as you get more experienced, you'll go, ah, oh, well if I pull that slider, that's gonna turn more orange or that's gonna turn more red. And you just gain experience. I think it's much better to do this than it is to just jump over here and slap a, a preset on, which as you can see, okay, that one looks quite good. But I don't wanna do that, I wanna edit the photos myself really unless it's a quick edit. So we're still just messing about here. Um, pull that back a bit, drop that, drop that, bit of that. And I don't think that looks too bad. And I haven't really done much. Okay, it's a bit of a guessing work. And I would say what you should do is probably take your time a little bit more, uh, note down, maybe if you can get a pen and paper, note down what changes the slide has made, and then you can revert back to that in future edits. So always make sure, probably before you start, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I did check, but I'm just making this point there now. Always make sure your lens corrections are on. So here, if we remove those, if you look, we've got some strong vignetting going on there. I think that's all actually, there's nothing really else going on, is there? So it's just really, it's removed that vignetting in the corner, as you can see, if we turn it off again, but you've got some strong vignetting there. Enable the corrections, we remove that. So first things first, you can set up profiles and stuff so it automatically does it, but probably what you're gonna do is when you first load up an image, scroll down, so you're at the top here, the effects, let's, uh, let's remove that mask, so we're back to the basics. Scroll down, all the way down, lens corrections, enable them. If it doesn't do it automatically, uh, then just select into here, find your lens. It's pretty much got all of them in, photo, in Lightroom, if I'm honest. Um, you shouldn't struggle there. And away you go. Everyone's time is precious. And if you've got 10, 20 photos to edit, don't spend too long on each one. Literally just spend a few minutes, maybe five, 10 minutes at absolute best just basically getting the basics, edit a photo. You can see we've done this really quick edit here and I'm actually pretty proud of that, to be honest. And I know it was basically by messing about with the sliders, 
But after this, I'm gonna take note of what did what and have a little bit more of a deep dive. So from there, I can know what did what. And if we go over to this sort of captain's reserve, uh, it's not far off that. That's probably just dumped the shadows a bit more, which I could obviously just go up and do now, just dump those shadows a bit more. Boost the highlights slightly. Drop the whites, drop the blacks. And that's pretty similar, I think. Probably not so much black. Bring those back up a little bit. And that's not far off at all. So yeah, don't spend too long. So yeah, as I've said previously in this video, to start with, probably avoid them. Don't use them. Try and just get to grips with all the different tools you've got here. I know it can be daunting, but there's many, many fantastic videos out there on YouTube. Free, you don't have to pay for courses. You can learn at your own pace, get going. For me, the only time I really want to use a preset is when I just want something, maybe quick edit, dump it online, I haven't got time to edit it, or it's not an amazing image and I don't want to spend the time editing it. That's when I may use a preset. But at the same time, I've still got all of the images where I'm learning Lightroom and also Photoshop. So yeah, skip the presets, learn the basics. You'll thank me for it later. So as you can see, I've opened up this image in Photoshop. Now in here, we can do so much stuff you can do. Uh, if you've taken three images from different focus, excuse me, for different focus points, you can stack them, you can merge photos, you can blend layers, you can do all sorts. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a simple mask. So spot healing tool, basically as it shows down there, we just click something and we delete it. So what we're gonna do is this little sign over here, we're just gonna delete that out. We don't want that in there. So let's just hover over that, bang, and it's gone. Now, as you can see, it's not exactly perfect, but when you're zoomed out in that image, I don't think a lot of people are really gonna notice that. And then what we do is we just basically from here, we click file, save, and from there, it's gonna save the image. If we drop back into Lightroom, we should then see our saved image pop up. So there it is with it gone. If we click there, it's back, back into the edit, and it's gone. Simple as that, really easy. It's great for if you've got a wide open aperture, sorry, a closed down aperture, say like F13, you've got a bit of dust or some water on your lens. You can just really zoom in and start to delete all those dust spots, etc. But that's probably the one thing I use myself in Photoshop to start with before I learn a bit more about that, is literally just to delete objects I don't want. So I hope you guys found that video interesting. Uh, I hope it was also informative, maybe something you could take away as a beginner, from a beginner. Uh, any tips, comments, anything like that, let me know down below. Love to hear them, love to interact. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, really helps the channel. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Uh, I think 99 point something percent people who watch the videos aren't subscribed. So if you could help me get to like 90, that would be fantastic. But yeah, plenty more photography stuff coming. Hopefully as I learn a bit more in Lightroom and Photoshop, I can do some more videos on this because I really enjoyed that. Uh, as ever, hope you guys have a great day. Have a great rest of the week. And hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.